You've seen me use them in the past, and it's one of the hottest development boards on the market right now. But what actually is a Node MCU, and what can you do with it? We're going to answer those questions and more today on the Maker's Workbench. Before we get started, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, which is JLC PCB, my go-to source for custom PCB fabrication. Their service is quick and easy to use and has very fast turnaround. They're running a special right now where you can order 10 of the same PCB for just $2, which is so cheap that the boards might as well be free. Additionally, JLC PCB supports creators like me by sponsoring videos like this. They're committed to the maker community and helping creators grow, and you know that I would not recommend them if I didn't use them myself. So head over to JLCPCB.com today and order 10 copies of your custom PCB for just $2. So what exactly is NodeMCU? Well, to put it simply, NodeMCU is a pairing of firmware and hardware based around the ESP8266-12E module, which is a low-cost, Wi-Fi-enabled microchip with a full TCP IP stack and microcontroller capabilities. Originally, the developers only tied the term NodeMCU to their open source firmware, which ran on the ESP8266-12E based development kit. But as time went on, the name NodeMCU became synonymous with the development board. From the beginning, users could program the boards using the Lua programming language, but Lua quickly fell out of favor as the open source community wrote libraries that allowed the board to be programmed with the Arduino IDE using the more popular Arduino programming language. And over time, compatibility with other languages such as MicroPython have been integrated. This has led to an explosion of the NodeMCU development boards being manufactured by online electronics retailers everywhere, and as a result, the market has flooded with cheap NodeMCU boards, which has driven down the price from about $10 each to less than $3 per board if you bought them in bulk from China. I've placed a link in the description below where you can purchase three of these boards for less than $17 from Amazon with free Prime shipping. And by purchasing them using that link, we'll earn a small commission from the sale from Amazon and that'll help keep our lights on here at the Maker's Workbench. So why are these cheap little development boards so popular? Well, I think it's because of several factors. First, as I mentioned, they're cheap and small. The average Node MCU 1.0 board measures in at just 1 inch wide and 2 inches long and fits perfectly on a traditional breadboard. This also makes it easy to integrate into very small projects. Second, they're powerful and feature 13 GPIO pins, including 12 digital pins and one analog pin. Additionally, each of the digital pins except for D0 can have an interrupt attached to it while pins D1 through D8 are capable of outputting PWM signals. Third, they're not very power hungry and only consume about 15 milliamps when not under load, but once you have a bunch of sensors connected, the load can reach as high as 20 to 25 milliamps. Fourth, as mentioned earlier, they can be programmed with Arduino, Lua, and even MicroPython, so they're quite versatile and easy for almost anyone to learn how to code with them. So let's take a moment to look at the NodeMCU development board a little closer. There are three generations of NodeMCU and three or four versions of the development board depending on who you talk to. Generation 1 consisted of version 0.9 and it was originally sold with a yellow solder mask that changed to blue once the clones began showing up in the marketplace. These boards measured in at 1.5 inches by 2 inches and would completely span a standard breadboard. This version also featured an ESP8266-12 module which would be upgraded later. Generation 2 came to life with the Node MCU version 1.0 standard being released. These boards featured a black solder mask and a smaller footprint of just 1 inch by 2 inches, which helped them fit better on a standard breadboard. 
Version 1.0 also saw the implementation of the upgraded ESP8266-12E module, and at some point version 1 morphed into version 2, but no changes to the hardware were made, and it just seemed to be the result of a change in the project's naming scheme. As of the posting of this video, an official Generation 3 has not been announced, but there is an unofficial Node MCU version 3, which leads some people to consider it the third generation. Version 3 is designed by electronics manufacturer Lowland and makes very minor updates to the design which include a larger footprint and two of the reserve pins being repurposed to provide USB power and an additional ground pin. Other than that, it's basically a version 1.0 or 2.0 depending on which naming convention you follow. Just keep in mind, version 3.0 will not fit on a standard breadboard. There's also a new ESP32 based version of the Node MCU floating around, but we're going to save that for another video. Since version 1.0 is the most popular Node MCU in the marketplace right now, I'm going to focus on it for the rest of this video while we take a look at the features and pinouts of this powerful little development board. Here you can see that the right side of the Node MCU contains all of the digital I.O. pins as well as two 3.3 volt pins, two ground pins, and TX and RX pins. The left side starts out with the A0 pin, two unused reserved pins, SD0 to SD3 which are used for connecting an SD card to the system, a clock pin, a ground pin, a 3.3 volt pin, an enable pin, a reset pin, another ground pin, and finally a voltage in pin which can provide 5 volts if needed or it can be used to power the Node MCU when you do not want to use the USB cable. Node MCU version 1.0 also features two buttons. The button on the left is the reset button which will power the board off and back on when pressed. The button on the right is the flash button which is used when flashing new firmware to the ESP8266-12E module. Additionally, the board features two surface mount LEDs. The LED near the antenna is connected to GPIO2, while the LED that is located near the USB to serial chip is connected to GPIO12 and will flash repeatedly when new code is being uploaded to the board. So there you have it. Now you know all about the Node MCU and it only took about five minutes of your life. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I have an entire series on Node MCU and how to use it with various sensors and devices to create cool home automation and Internet of Things projects. I try to post a new video every week, but that is not always possible, so please ring the notification bell so that you can be notified when I post a new video. Additionally, if you would like to support me here at the Maker's Workbench, please consider purchasing your DIY electronics and maker related things using my Amazon affiliate links that are in the description below. You can also support this channel by becoming one of our subscribers over at Subscribestar. It's just like Patreon, but with less restrictions on what creators are allowed to upload. And if you do not want to do either of those things, you can always just leave a comment below and click the like button to let us know how much you like what we do here at the Workbench. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I want to thank you again for watching, and as always, hack the world and make awesome.